You ever go to the store and buy a gallon of milk? Up near the top there, there's a date. That's the expiration date. That's the date where milk kinda no longer fulfills its obligations, doesn't live up to expectations. Well, lots of things have expiration dates. But did you know solar panels have an expiration date? Okay, they don't literally spoil and make you sick, but they lose the ability to make power over time. And as time goes on, the amount of power they can create gets so low, it's kind of not worth it. So what do you do with them? Well, I'll tell you what they're doing with them in California. They're throwing them into landfills. How is this going to affect you? Oh, let's find out. So California went big into solar. They started early. They started in the 90s and the early 2000s. But they really went big around 2006. That's when they started offering the massive subsidies. They were almost giving them away if you put solar on your house. And that probably was a good idea at the time. But solar panels kind of lose their efficiency at the 15 to 20 year mark. And that first big batch of solar panels, they're done. So let's dig into this article and see what we can see. Now this is coming from Yahoo News. I'm going to link this down below so you can read it. It is a very long article that goes into way more detail than I'm going to cover here. But this will be a little uh, amuse-bouche to get you started. California went big on rooftop solar. Now that's a problem for landfills. And they got this clever little picture here of piles of dead solar panels. Yikes. California has been a pioneer in pushing for rooftop solar power, building up the largest solar market in the U.S. More than 20 years and 1.3 million rooftops later, the bill is coming due. Beginning in 2006, the state focused on how to incentivize people to take up solar power. They showered subsidies on homeowners who installed photovoltaic panels, but had no comprehensive plan to dispose of them. Now, Panels purchased under those programs are nearing the end of their typical 25 to 30 year life cycle. Many are already winding up in landfills, where in some cases they could potentially contaminate groundwater with, heavy, with toxic heavy metals such as lead, selenium, and cadmium. Okay, let's just stop real quick here. Lead, selenium, and cadmium are in landfills soaking into the groundwater. California desperately, urgently needs to conserve all the groundwater they have. They are in a multi-year drought, and uh, this is making a bad problem potentially exponentially worse. So you can't drink it, and it's really hard to filter lead and cadmium out of water. So the groundwater is literally turning to poison because of this. Okay, just, let's get back to this real quick. Sam Vanderhoof, a solar industry expert and chief executive of Recycle PV Solar, says that only 1 in 10 panels are actually recycled. Oh, well, they are recyclable. That's good news. So according to estimates drawn from International Renewable Energy Agency data on decommissioned panels from industry leaders, the looming challenge of how to handle truckloads of waste, some of it contaminated, illustrates how cutting-edge environmental policy can create unforeseen problems down the road. It was supposed to be green, Vanderhoof said, but in reality, it's all about the money. Okay, this is a, an industry leader. Not me, not my opinion. He says it was supposed to be green, but it's all about the money. Isn't it always all about the money? Now, when they started giving these lavish subsidies on homeowners to put these uh, solar panels on their roofs, they paid them to do it. They paid them handsomely, to be quite honest. The solar panels were, in some cases, almost free. And the electrical companies, the power generating companies, were on board, and they were giving them just ridiculous payments for the, en the excess energy that these solar panels produced, and they were selling it back to the electric companies. So if you were an early adapter, and you got virtually paid to put these solar panels on your roof, and then you got paid again from the power companies to sell your energy back to them. Oh, you made out great. But once again, this is something that typically only affects, you know, 
the 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 early adapters. That's a code word for rich people or well-connected people. California came early to solar power. Small governmental rebates did little to bring down the price of solar panels or to encourage their adoption until 2006 when the California Public Utilities Commission formed the California Solar Initiative that granted $3.3 billion in subsidies for installing solar panels on rooftops. That confirms what I just said. They gave $3.3 billion to a select few to install solar panels so they could then make energy and sell it back to the power companies. Uh, hey, this is a rich man's game. I'm sorry if this is the first time you're hearing it, but that's how life works. So the rich people just continue to get richer. Now, I am no capitalist versus socialist kind of guy. I've got my opinions on that. That's not the place for this article. But it is shocking to see how California, who wants to be the fairest for everyone, always continues to, in reality, do the opposite of what they preach. Just pointing that out. So... It's shocking. By giving $3.3 billion in subsidies, the measure exceeded its goals, bringing down the price of solar panels and boosting the share of the state's electricity produced by the sun. Because of that and other measures, such as requirements that utilities buy a portion of their electricity from renewable sources, solar power now accounts for 15% of the state's power. Exactly what I said. I should have read this article ahead of time. I'm kind of filling it in before I get there. So... They did mention a thing. I want to get back to this. Now, we can skip over some of this boring parts. There, we need to talk about what to do with these panels once they are out of their lifespan. Okay, Are they renewable? Are they recyclable? Well, let's find out. Although 80% of a typical photovoltaic panel is made of recyclable materials, disassembling them and recovering the glass, silver, and silicone is extremely difficult. There's no doubt that there will be an increase in solar panels entering the waste stream in the next decade or so, said A.J. Orban, vice president of We Recycle Solar, a Phoenix-based company that breaks down panels and extracts the valuable metals while disposing of toxic elements. That's never been a question. The vast majority of We Recycle Solar's business comes from California, but the company has no facilities in that state. Want to guess why? Want to guess? Instead, the panels are trucked to a site in Yuma, Arizona. That's because California's rigorous permitting system for toxic materials makes it exceedingly difficult to set up shop. So California just creates all the trash, and they're like, no, you got to send it out of state. We're not dealing with that. California is one of the most hypocritical places I have ever seen. If you were to make a cartoon describing what a hypocritical policy looked like, California wouldn't even come close. They, it would exceed it by every measurable measure. California, what have you guys done? So, recycling solar panels isn't a simple process. Highly specialized equipment and workers are needed to separate the aluminum frame and junction box from the panel without shattering it into glass shards. Specialized furnaces are used to heat panels to recover silicone. In most cases, panels are classified as hazardous material. Ooh, remember that. Panels are classified as hazardous materials, which require expensive restrictions on packaging, transport, and storage. The vast majority of residential solar arrays in the U.S. are crystalline silicone panels, which can contain lead, although it's less prevalent in newer panels. Thin film solar panels, which contain cadmium and selenium, are primarily used in utility-grade applications. Okay, so they are incredibly expensive to recycle. So... Most people are going to throw them away in landfills where they'll leach these toxic chemicals. Orban said, "The economics of the process don't make it compelling. Don't make a compelling case for recycling. Only about two to four dollars worth of materials are recovered from each panel. The majority of processing costs are tied to labor. And Orban said even recycling panels at scale would not be more economical." How much are they worth? Okay, this skews the econ economic incentives against recycling. The National Renewable Energy Laboratory estimated it costs roughly $20 to $30 to recycle a panel versus $1 to $2 to send it to a landfill. And there you go. And there you go. Once these panels have been up on a roof for 20 to 30 years, they're worthless in making electricity, and they're worthless in recycling. So you chunk them into the trash. You can't chunk them into the trash in California. 
you have to put them on a big diesel truck, drive them out to Arizona, see if they can recycle them, and then throw them away. Still seem green now? What about the uh, when you make the solar panels? Creation. you got to dig up all that cadmium, lead, and selenium, and you've got to refine the polycrystalline silicone, and yeah, this takes an incredible amount of energy. And they're only good for 20 years, maybe 30 if you're lucky. Solar panels are not as green as you think. A few seconds ago, I said that California was hypocritical in the way they handled the waste of these solar panels. So last year, new DTSC regulation came into effect that reclassified the panels, changing the way they can be collected and transported. Previously, all panels were required to be treated as hazardous waste upon removal, which restricted transportation and storage. They reclassified them. Well, they're not hot toxic anymore. We just have so many of them, we don't know what to do with it. What do you do with them? Reclassify them. Oh, there you go. Problem solved. They just reclassified it. Both business and residential consumers, or generators as they are called in the recycling industry, were supposed to transport the panels themselves to a certified recycling or hazardous waste disposal facility. With little tracking, it's unclear how frequently that occurred. Well, I'll tell you what. If something costs $30 to recycle, you can get 2 to $3 worth of materials out of it, or you can throw them in the landfill for a dollar, and no one's checking who's doing what. What do you think's happening? Any guesses? I thought so. Now, panels are classified as universal waste and can, can be collected at more than 400 universal waste handlers in California, where they are then assessed and transported to disposal, reuse, or recycle facilities. In cases where panels containing toxic materials are relegated to landfills, they are sent to facilities with extra safeguards against leakage. Because we trust the government to protect our landfills against leakage, governments really can't do anything. When they have a problem, they just throw it in a landfill. But they're toxic. We'll change the rules. Now they're not toxic. We declassified them. But we need a special place to do... Oh, we'll just make this one extra safe. They're still going in the ground, right? Yeah. They're still going next to our water supply. Yeah. But we labeled it as safer. Oh. Okay. Well, then I guess everything's fine. See how California just relabels their problems to make them go away? I just gave you three examples of that. And this is just one product. California is toxic. I mean, sure, putting dead photovoltaic panels in landfills is toxic, but California is making everything toxic. So what's the solution? Well, if I were to guess, California would throw money at it. Hey, check this out. Government subsidies are one way to make solar panel recycling economically viable for the waste generators, who now bear much the cost of recycling. So it's not profitable to recycle these toxic death traps. So we'll just pay them to do it. So they paid them to install the solar panels, paid them to use the solar panels, now they're paying them to dispose of the solar panels, and now they're paying them to recycle the solar panels. You see how California just throws money at every step of this problem? They literally created the problem from every single step. And all you taxpayers in California, you you foot the bill for this. They, they, they sent the bill to you. Now, the first adopters got... I don't know if they got wealthy, but they certainly made money on the early adopting their solar panels. Now, the next wave is going to be these recycle companies. They're going to get fabulously wealthy by taking these solar panels, driving them someplace else, and throwing them in a the landfill. You, you see the plan yet? You figured it out? Now, it's not entirely fair for me to just pick on California. I know California kind of started this madness, and they're one of the biggest perpetrators. But, to be fair, this is not a just California problem. They are having these exact same kinds of problems in Texas, in Florida, in Louisiana, and Alabama, and most of the southern states that get a lot of sun. They're also having this problem in New York, in Massachusetts, in Michigan, in Arizona, and oh, everywhere. Okay, it's a, it's a nationwide problem. And in reality... It's a global problem because most of these panels are made in China and they're not nearly as efficient with toxic handling as we are. 
I make fun of us with because we're throwing all these toxic chemicals in landfills and it will affect the groundwater and that's bad. But they're made in China and India where I think the environmental concerns are a lot worse. So that just goes back to one of my original points that these solar panels are not very green at all. They just don't last very long. They're toxic to make and they're toxic to dispose of. We got a serious problem. It's starting to look like fossil fuels are really the best way to go. Now, solar panels will get better. They will get thinner, they'll get less toxic, and there will be a technology that will come along. But they rushed into this without really having an end plan. And we're going to pay for it. Again. Just like everything else that California does, I guess. So those of you that are thinking about getting solar panels on your roof, I can't tell you what to do. I don't know what makes sense for you. Is it as green as you think it is? Probably not. Will you be able to save a little money? Maybe. How long are they going to last? 20, 30 years maybe? I mean, if you're going to be dead by then, I guess you could say someone else's problem. But that's not cool. Don't don't do that. So think think it over. You know, maybe maybe we're right around the corner from a new kind of solar cell that's going to work at a hundred percent efficiency and last for a hundred years. And it's made out of salt and tree bark. I don't know. You never know what the future is going to bring you. But I don't want to end on a black pill. Okay, we're gonna believe it or not, we're gonna wrap this up with the Great Horse Manure Crisis of 1894. How is this related to solar panels? Oh, please, just stick with me. Back in 1894, in New York City, they had a horse manure crisis. The population was growing, and the best way around was via horseback. And horses were pooping everywhere. It was making the city almost impossible to travel, and no one knew what to do. Horse poop was everywhere. And it was really ruining the whole city. So they got meetings and they had conventions and committees. And what are we going to do? What are we going to do? Oh, no. And then someone invented a car. And a few short years later, there were no more horses. Everyone was driving a car. The horse poop problem disappeared. And that may happen with our solar panels. We have a crisis now that seems like there's no solution. We don't know what to do. Horses were great. Everyone needed them. Solar panels were great. Everyone wanted them. And now they're toxic. Same similarities. But we solved that problem through technology. So don't give up on us. I think there will be a solution. We just need to get over this and figure it out. And also it's a lesson for the future. Don't rush into a solution because someone tells you it's perfect. Use your brains for a minute and figure it out. We're smarter than this.